In this video we're gonna talk about the Sony FX6 and why this camera is not for every filmmaker. So about five years ago I decided to leave my normal job and move on as a full-time freelance filmmaker. Like everybody else, I started with smaller camera bodies, like first the A7S Mark II, then I got my GH5S, and then I moved on to my Sony A7S III, which is filming me right now. But the more I developed my skills, my sets got bigger, and I realized that my small cameras are not made for the professional industry environment. So I started renting different cinema cameras for my bigger jobs, till it made sense to get my own. So what's the difference between my normal camera like the Sony a7S III and this Sony FX6 cinema line camera? A lot of people saying that's the same camera with the same sensor, kind of, but also not. First of all, let's look at the specs of this camera. With this camera I can film up to 4K with some great dynamic range, about 15 stops and also some great, great frame rates. And I also can use Sony's great autofocus. But it's still very similar like the Sony a7S III. So let's talk about the selling points of a real cinema camera body. So the biggest selling point of this camera, in my case, were the professional in and out parts. You have the opportunity to plug in your professional broadcast quality XLR microphones and you can also connect your monitor or your wireless transmitter for your director, for example, through the STI, which is one million times stronger and more stable than the HDMI. And we can also use the timecode in or out. The next point and probably my most favorite one is the internal variable ND filter. It gives you a very fast and professional workflow. You can change your lenses without screwing on your frontal variable ND filters from another lens and you will also never see a vignetting on this camera. We also have the opportunity to film with Cine-I mode, which is kind of more precise way to work with S-Log, so you can decide how many stops of your dynamic range you will give to your shadows or your highlights. We are also having industry standard tools like the Vectorscope and Waveforms, which are supporting us while we're filming. And my last favorite point are all these buttons on this camera where I can just work way faster and having to go into menus. So it sounds like a dream camera, but let's not only talk about the great features of this camera and look at the dark side of the Sony FX6. If you remove the top handle of the camera, you will lose all your inputs for audio. It has some scratch audio microphone, but nothing else. So for example, if you want to use this camera on a gimbal and you screw off your top handle, you can't just plug in some microphones, for example, like the Rode Wireless Go 2 system. And as we're talking about this mic system, you will also need a splitter cable from TRS to XLR. And yeah, in my opinion, it's a great camera. Beside of this top handle audio issue, I wish that companies like Tilt, a wooden camera or small rig will develop some kind of screw on audio adapter where it just takes the input of this top handle and give us one XLR and one TRS 3.5 millimeter input from the smaller systems, that would be great. And now we can talk about who this camera is made for. In my opinion, if you are working on smaller freelance projects and you're working often alone by yourself as a one-man band, I would probably stick to the A7S III or the FX3. I think it's the perfect camera for DPs which are working on more professional sets like commercials, documentaries or kind of corporate films, but also want to be flexible and light. So that's pretty much it. I hope I could give you some information about the camera. I will make more videos about it in the future and maybe the next one will be the Cine-Eye mode because um, it's pretty confusing if you're using it for the first time. And yeah, if you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my content, you can subscribe to my channel. I will see you maybe in the next one.